This is the Balancing Act by Security Compass, your guide to going fast while staying safe in today's digital world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our podcast today. Our guest speaker is Kim Vats. Kim, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So, Kim, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up working on Linden? Um, well, I'm a, a researcher um, at uh, the IMEC Distrinet Research Group, which is uh, part of KU Leuven, a university in Belgium. And, um, well, I actually started there working on security. Um, and we were asked to um, do a security assessment of a software architecture. So we looked at Stride. And some colleagues of us um, had to do the same thing for privacy. And when we uh, compared results, they were like, wow, well, you have really a method, something um, systematic to do this. That's really interesting. That doesn't really exist for privacy. So that's where the idea came from. Well, let's try to do something similar for privacy. So that's why we started looking into privacy threat modeling. And that's where Linden uh, basically arose. Hmm. Interesting. So you, you, you described a little bit about what your goals were for Linden. Uh, and now based on your experience and with others using Linden in their, in their work, um, if you were to describe what Linden is, is it a technology? Is it a framework? Is it a philosophy? What is Linden? Well, that's a great question. Um, we are calling it a framework, but basically it depends on your definition of framework, I would say. So um, it's a method. It describes how you can systematically um, analyze a software architecture and go through different privacy threat categories and reason about those categories with respect to your system architecture. So it's a framework in that sense. It's not a framework in the sense that you can plug it in and press the run key and it will do the work for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for those that might be interested, you could check out Linden on the web. Uh, there's a bunch of work that is uh, going on right now. So uh, please feel free to go in and, and check out the work that's being done. Uh, Kim, what is the difference between privacy threat modeling and security threat modeling? Well, at the foundation, both are the same. I mean, each threat modeling method or framework or methodology will, will always adhere to the, the four steps as coined by Adam Shostek, which are, uh, what are we working on? What can go wrong? What are we going to do about it? And did we do a good job? So the foundation remains the same, but um, I think it's interesting to stress because most people know threat modeling from the security perspective. And there you look at um, the assets with respect to the company, while for privacy, you really need a different mindset, basically. It's not about the assets of the company, you're really trying to protect the data subject rights. It's about personal data and how you can process that. So while the foundation remains the same, it requires a different mindset and therefore also a different knowledge base, not with security threat knowledge, but with uh, privacy threat knowledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting that you bring that up because now we're uh, starting to enter into uh, questions around data governance and, and things like that. So let me ask you a question. We're hearing a lot about DevOps and DevSec, DevSecOps uh, and pipelines and how we move things rapidly through these pipelines. Can you talk a little bit about what contribution Linden might make to these rapidly moving pipelines? Have you ever faced that type of situation before? Um, well, I, I mainly approach it from the research angle. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the thing is what Linden does is provide that, that well, process and knowledge support. So the, the overall question, what can go wrong is, it's kind of abstract and vague. How can you think about what can go wrong from a privacy perspective? That's where Linden, I think, has its main value because it provides knowledge, it provides guidance for a set of uh, threat categories, which are basically the acronym Linden. So it's linkability, identifiability, non-repudiation, detectability, disclosure of information, 
unawareness and non-compliance. So those are the seven categories for which Linden provides additional information of potential things that can go wrong in those categories. And that's where the value comes from. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply that very, um, let's say, um, extensive, systematic, and, and make it um, like very reproducible and accountable, the process, or you can make it more lightweight, more lean, um, depending on your development process, on, on your um, basically organizational requirements. Um, so I think it's, it's uh, the knowledge and the overall process that, that bring the value and you can see how you can best apply that in practice. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I've had conversations around privacy, uh, we inevitably end up in a, in a discussion around legal and interpretation of things like privacy. And what Linden does is it provides a basis for, for having some of these kinds of discussions um, to, so that we're, we're all speaking from the same vocabulary, so to speak, and we're not trying to uh, interpret what each other is saying and really missing, even though we're talking about the same things, they actually mean quite different things depending on the domains that, that we're uh, viewing this from. Um, when you look at Linden, um, there are organizations that are using Linden today uh, they are contributing some information back to your team around this. Can you talk a little bit from your perspective? Uh, where do you think this whole idea of privacy is going to be in the next, let's say, 18 to 24 months? Hmm, interesting. Um, well, I, I think the, the need for privacy and and hopefully also privacy threat modeling uh, will keep growing. We, we see the impact of um, legislations such as GDPR uh, really making a difference in, in um, let's say software engineering and, and really um, making an impact on the way that privacy is being, well, basically required. So, and we see more of those legislations popping up. So I, I think, from my privacy background perspective, I, I think that's great. Um, and also you, you, well, at least according to me, um, a lot of people will want to have that kind of privacy um, embedded in systems. We, we see that move from uh, people who, who uh, drop WhatsApp and move to other um, um, messaging apps such as Signal because um, overnight the policies have been changed. So I think it's also the, the public opinion that really wants this kind of privacy embedded in systems. So I am quite optimistic and I think we will see more privacy being embedded really by design um, in the coming months and years. Mm -hmm, indeed, and I think that uh, confirms what I'm seeing from my side as well. Uh, as we see uh, security and privacy even um, converging in, in topics around ethics, for example, and looking for the emergent standards around ethical considerations and what's the ethical use of data as it pertains to privacy, for example, and how security can go in and can be an enabler for privacy. So there's a lot of uh, activity that's going on right now in standards groups within various security communities. Um, you know, your team is, is working on things in this space as well. Let me ask you something, Kim. If someone has feedback on Linden, is there a way that they can get in touch with you or someone on your team? How do they, how do they engage with you? Yeah, absolutely. We would love feedback. Um, so I think there's a feedback form or at least a some information about how to contact us on uh, on the Linden website, which is www.linden.org. Um, but I, I am also available on like Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, if you want to connect with me, that's also possible. Wonderful. That's great. Kim, it's been an honor speaking to you today. Thank you very much for your time. 
thanks for having me. It was uh, it was nice to talk about privacy and threat modeling. Thanks. Wonderful. That's great. And to all of our listeners, thank you for listening in to this edition of the Balancing Act. Want to learn about what Security Compass has to offer? Check out securitycompass.com slash demo for a free demo today. Want more of the Balancing Act? Be sure to subscribe to our channel wherever you listen to podcasts for more episodes.